This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Raffstar, GoDaddy, Netflix, and rent a noob because in this economy, it's hard to own a noob. And this time on Hack 5 is WPA Broken, IKEA Clusters, Session Hijacking, Virtualizing Servers, Screencasting, and Canvas Technolust. Yeah, it's easy. It's just one, two, three, one, two, three, rock, step. Okay, forget I even offered to show you. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. This is your weekly dose of Technolust, and we are your IT ninjas. I'm Ninja Darren. I'm Ninja Matt. I'm Pirate Shannon. Yar. Awesome. <laughs> Fun stuff going on this week, right? Yep. Um, you are getting into some VMware stuff? Uh, yeah, what I'm going to be doing is starting a uh, multi-episode arc on uh, virtual infrastructures. Um, so basically starting the process off by converting physical machines to virtual machines. We'll actually get into all of that and at the final stage actually show you guys centralized storage uh, using some free tools mm -hmm. so that uh, you know it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Virtualization is a lot of fun. It is. The other day I was uh, trying to put together the new set cam box mm -hmm. and I was up in my room and I'm like oh what am I going to use to build this thing? I just need like I don't know a crappy windows box I'll throw two webcams on it and throw it downstairs and you know shoot the hole downstairs. It'd be awesome, right? And I'm, and then I opened up uh, VMware server, started to build a machine until I realized I actually needed a physical machine to sit down here. Yeah. And that was a very sad, can, can you do some virtualization to physical server for me? Um, well, you can pretty much do what I'm gonna show you and mm -hmm. transfer the image over. I'm, I'm talking about like a... You want me to basically create a like box a, out of my, you know, my Ask yeah, yeah, here exactly. and be like, or, or, poof, you there know, it is. One of those like 3D printer dealies, like make me a server. Yeah, uh, we're advanced. Mm -hmm. We're not that advanced. Cool. Well, maybe on episode like 20x12 or something, we'll talk about that. There are no X's anymore, remember? I, you know, I still put the X's in the, uh, <laughs> in the Hack 5 <laughs> forums. What's going on over there, Shannon? You're like having way too much fun with that window. Oh, shit. Um, it's raining out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Sorry, I dropped something. <laughs> Hold on, let me get that. Cool. Well, while you're doing that, what do you got? Um, I've got, <laughs> I have two, not just one, two pineapples. One is a deadly router, and uh, the other one is a tasty concoction. Now, I thought we weren't going to be doing. Uh, people have, people have said mm -hmm. that they wonder when Darren's going to come up with something new, mm -hmm. besides Yasiger. Now. Well, what you're actually doing isn't like no, no, re-engineering Yasiger, you're utilizing Yasiger. I'm using the version 2.0 of Yasiger, but that's the whole idea of the Yasiger project was it was a uh, foundation oh my that, God. I could, that I could, I'll worry about it later, <laughs> that I could totally die. build on uh, for future presentations, hacks, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be talking about session hijacking and to do that, of course, easiest way I can think of to get a nice little man in the middle going would be with the pineapple, yeah, but uh, but I mean that that's just a tool, right? right? So I'm going to be talking about session hijacking, cookies, and the ways to steal them, and uh, log into your shit. It'll be fun. Dope sauce. What are you drinking? I'm having a thing called a bondage, no problem. It's vodka, rum, gin, triple sec, orange juice, cranberry juice, and pineapple juice. It's good. <laughs> okay. Oh, grenadine too. Grenadine. Yeah. Sorry. Most important of the uh, quote unquote. It's just a splash though. There. So you hear about the uh, WPA stuff? You getting scared? No. So for those who've been, uh, we don't live in really a, a, a real target-rich environment. No, but here I mean, in, it's an interesting proof of concept thing, right? It's like the first time that WEP was cracked, and it was like, okay, so well, we um, all knew WEP was busted from no, the beginning. No, we did. Well, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, dude, you were so skeptical of wireless. You were like, oh my god. Yeah. Okay. You knew right. you were. All right. You're and then right. they're like, oh, we've got some encryption going on, and then you're like, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, interesting stuff coming out of PacSec uh, in Tokyo, and um, there's actually a proof of concept tool that you can get over at Aircrack NG. I'll have the link in the show notes and whatnot. Um, it's not fully functional at the moment, but there's actually proof of concept uh, tool that you can play around with to uh, put together your own little. You know, it's it's basically taking the stuff that was in the research paper, the uh, practical uh, practical attack against WPA and WP, and turning it into something that you can play with. It's not. Super, I, I just, 
I don't think it's ready for prime time. So one, once well, it no, is, we'll I, talk about it in I'm more detail. What I'm told is that everything's going, I mean, they've got one way working. Right. And this is only on WPA using TKIP. So if you're using AES, Totally Mad Chill, WPA2, Dope Sauce, and all that you other know, stuff. I think we should show people how to, because wireless range you know, anymore. And you remember when A came out? They're like, oh, this is going to be the complete corporate enterprise solution running yeah, on the 5 gigahertz the band. A. It didn't work for shit. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't use it through like thick walls or concrete or whatever. I think we should, um, for a segment idea, I think we should show people how to link wireless routers together. Link, like to WDS. It's because we got something similar going on up in here. And now yeah. that, oh, now that it fixed the eights are here, turned out it wasn't our access point. It was the drivers. And now I'm getting like six megabits off the, so. He has been bugging me for the last month. I month just, and a half, ever since I put in the new wireless router run in DDWRT, which is really nice, by the way. Um, Your access point sucks, man. I get crap speeds. Meanwhile, there is the only one that's having a problem. A firmware <laughs> update and a driver later. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Speaking of which, doesn't somebody else need to install the same drivers? Ah, yes, yes she does. Well, seeing that my birthday was yesterday, I had to think about that for a second. Woo, time warp here. Uh, Darren actually bought me a present. He got me an Acer, Aspire One. And the best part is, it's pink. It's my, uh, what did you call it, Matt? It's the Malibu laptop. The what Barbie? It? It's the, the Barbie board. The, the Barbie, Barbie board. board. <laughs> yeah. If mine's a Tonka toy, then hers is a, a Mattel a Mattel, machine. yeah. Yeah. And you know, you're- Can it be Fisher so, Price? So you've got, well, no, his Fisher Price is the, oh, uh, right, the Asus. E. And then that is, um, yeah, it's Tonka toy. I, I don't I, understand. I like Barbie board. Barbie board. I don't understand yeah. the whole. And they got Jesus thing. too. Thing. I mean, <laughs> like they're cheap and they're good. Like enough. I could, I could only understand if if I needed one, if I had like a 17 inch. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a 15, I can reliably put it on a plane. Mm -hmm. No space issues, even if I'm in coach, mm -hmm. which rarely ever happens anymore. But yeah, right. dude, the last five uh, flights I flew digress. was first class. But I mean, it's there's plenty of room for me to do my stuff even in coach. So mm -hmm. I don't need, and you know, it's like I, I don't go to coffee shops. I don't. I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I, I like coffee, we're, we're but I don't wrong. like the we're pretentious the that. crackheads that go to coffee. <laughs> we're gonna digress from here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you uh, real quick. We got a uh, note from one of our viewers when we were talking about the. Uh, clustering mm -hmm. actually pointed out to us the story of Helmer. It's a Linux cluster uh, yeah, inside of it. an IKEA cabinet, and it's uh, it's a very interesting read. Um, the the first Helmer was done, uh, I think, with like eight or six. It was done with six boards, quad yeah. cores, and forty eight gigs of oh, RAM. It's gorgeous. One hundred eighty six gigaflops. Well, did you see Helmer two? Like the the potent, like the idea. Yeah. And then the Helmer three, and it just starts making you. Dude, wet. I want a Helmer I mean, three. Yeah, I yeah, can't lie. I don't know what I would do with it, but I'd take down small countries. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's good because you, thinking outside of the box. Yeah, I like you think it. of clusters and you're like, oh, know, fucking boring shit. But I I'm, honestly think of like those uh, those racks that you see in restaurants, like those those boring shelves with just like lined with uh, lined with motherboards. Is what I see. We can do that. I, I don't think about cooling though, so my cluster would probably catch on fire. You know what we should do? We should start taking donations of people's old ass hardware that they've got in their basement. No, don't, 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 no, bad idea. Don't, don't. We should move on from here. No. And uh, PO was Box Six No, no, no. Don't listen <laughs> to me. It's not happening. Yeah. Shut up. We are. <laughs> we're gonna start talking about the land party so we can get out of here. Good idea. Land party, what's going on, Shannon? Well, well, I did want to mention, though, that, you know, my birthday was yesterday, but we have a birthday coming up on Friday. I think it's Friday. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Don't guys, walk away. Yeah, you come back here. You're talking here. about P.O. Box 6002, one from Virginia 2318. Send, send your loving to Matt here. He's <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking turning about. Turning the prime Happy age birthday, of 21. Matt. <laughs> I thought it was 12. Yeah, something like that. Mm. So, yes. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> He's going to be old enough to get owned in the Hack 5 land party. Yay! Yeah, this, uh, I think it's next week. We have a land party coming up. It's November 29th, that Saturday, at game.hack5.org. Of course, you guys probably know that website by now, that server. We're playing Unreal Tournament Classic. 
And from what I hear, Darren's pretty good at that game, but I don't know, I've owned him a couple of times, so can't say right or wrong on that. A anyway, if you feel like playing against him in this game, check it out, come play with us. Yeah, there's a thread up on the forums uh, under the gaming section at hack5.org where you can uh, go ahead and sign up for a little 1v1, and uh, it's just my gift to you to you know let you get dominated, <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> Oh, please. I'm pretty sure if we play against each other, um, Darren versus Snubs. Then we'll Snubs. televise it. Yes. And right. um, I'll That's own also you. how it works. So. Yeah. I'll own you. Just saying. Just going to put that out there. She's throwing down the, ba the band hammer, dude. She's going to, you know. The band hammer. All yeah. right. Jesus Something is on like my that. side. Have your cocktail. She's got Jesus. Uh, That's You're true. Screwed. I have my own personal Jesus on my side. With a little spring, too. I will Springy win. Springy action Jesus. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's hopping Jesus. Let's uh, GTFO. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, Very much you guys, so. GTFO, SDFU, okay? It's <laughs> my right. part now. Let me tell you about, guys about our sponsor for the LAN party. It's GoDaddy. Thank you so much, GoDaddy, for sponsoring our episode. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Plus, GoDaddy recently started registering .ca domains. And if you use code HAK2, you can get $5 off a $30 order. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details and get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. I'm going to go fill up my margarita and I'm going to shoot it back to you guys. Have your dreams of owning a noob been shattered by our poor economy? Today, countless noobs are left unowned by those struggling to find financing. At rent a noob we can help. With no deposits, credit checks, and low monthly payments, you can finally have a noob of your own to take to school. Starting at $2.99 per month, you can make a difference in a noob's life. With shame. Find out more about our 4 recertified noobs at rentanoob.com. All right, guys. Well, in the comments of episode 411, we had a user by the name of Mnemonic ask us, Darren, you created this fawn, you and Robin and Mubix and everybody else associated with it. So what are we going to do with it? Well, I mean, the idea was to build on this throughout the rest of the season as a platform for talking about a lot of different stuff. And the thing is, a lot of the fun stuff really relies on being a man in the middle. Right. Uh, we talked about that in the first season. We've shown you how to do things like ARP cache poisoning to get man in the middle using Windows tools, Linux tools, whatever. It's nice because it's a simple piece of hardware that you can take with you on your hacking adventures and everybody just kind of gets sucked into it. So. And it does its own thing, so there's no real setup required on your end yeah. to go ahead and you know become, okay, now I gotta run this tool and this tool and this tool and this yeah. tool, and we can just have people connect and... And then the rest of the, and that just takes the whole legwork out of it. So now it's just, come to me, my precious, and, right. and we can start having some fun. So, um, talking about fun, let's talk about session hijacking. Let's talk about stealing those oh so important cookies. So you know when you uh, log into websites, um, they keep your session throughout, you know, as you, okay, you log into this page and then you gotta go to that page and that page and that page, but you're still on this system and you're logged in and they right. keep your session with a little cookie, right? So uh, not, now you, doing it. speaking of, even the most secure websites on earth mm -hmm. use sessions. Yeah. And, and cookies. what we're gonna show, or what you're gonna show is how to clone your cookies. Oh, okay. Yeah, because check this out, right? This cookie's got a unique identifier that says, okay, cool, you've got this cookie, you must be you, we're feeding you the right information. Right. Cool, right? I'm sniffing in everything in between. You're connected to me uh, through my phone. I'm in between you and you know the internet, so I, I can see that cookie. So I can take that cookie and I can, like with a Firefox um, plugin like, uh, like uh, Cookie Edit, you can, uh, inject it manually and then go to the same website if you're like sitting there watching right. a Wireshark. Uh, or with another tool, uh, you can actually uh, make this a little bit more easy, a little bit more automated to hijack these co cookies, hijack these sessions. And uh, so the idea is you go to a website, you log in, I notice it, I go to the same website, I'm now logged in as you. Now more I got the same session. More importantly, everything that we've done has shown the fawn as you know, uh, hooking up to a wired, you know, computer mm -hmm. or, you know, wireless network that, you know, it's already, you know, next to or something like that. You've actually got it set up so that 
and this is running uh, car, uh, Yasuga version 2. Yes. So that it's actually connected through your phone. Correct, yeah, and I'll go ahead and show you what's going on here. Uh, Karma, if you haven't played with the Osiger version 2, definitely check it out. Uh, uh, it was just recently released, it's up on the Hack5 forums. Adds a, a couple of nice features, like for example, the WLAN light lights up when Karma is activated, mm -hmm. and some, some under the hood stuff that makes it pretty. Um, so if you take a look at my screen here, uh, this National Access Broadband, th this, this guy right here, this is actually my, um, this is my connection with myself, and you see I got a ton of packets going on through here. That's totally cool because people are using my cell phone. As you can see over here, um, it's just a simple direct connection, USB cable to my BlackBerry, and I get online. Um, I could do this through Bluetooth, but I like the bandwidth with the uh, USB. Right. Uh, and I'm just doing this in Windows because it's super simple. I'm, I'm using ICS, Internet Connection Sharing, which uh, on my uh, on my BlackBerry interface, on my interface to my EVDO modem, uh, I basically share out that connection to my wired connection. I could do the same thing with my wireless. You do this with Bluetooth and wireless, then you've got a phone in your in one pocket and a <laughs> cell phone in another <laughs> pocket and a laptop here, and people you know just what? look at you weird. I think we need to sell Hack uh, 5 branded uh, Yasuger fanny packs. What, what was the thing that Chewbacca had? A little the bandolier. Guy, the bandolier. The bandolier. A little hacking bandolier might be what we need. Um, <laughs> So the biggest issue uh, w with a lot of people getting set up with this is, okay, great, people associate to my, uh, to my fawn here, to my Yasuga, my little pineapple, if you will, um, and it's, uh, but then they need an IP address and they need and a connection to the internet. So right. for me on Windows, I just ICS, my cell phone, they go through that, and then here's the trick. I set up a DHCP server, not on the font. I set up the font to DHCP mode using the WebIF interface and going through in there. And it, it's in Doing a wiki. All the there's there's a cool wiki thing. Yeah, like yeah it's, it's nothing really complicated. You just go into networking, you set it to DHCP, give it an IP and mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, but I've got it physically connected with an Ethernet cable here uh, over to my laptop. And then I set this interface up as a DHCP server in Windows. I mean, if I was running Windows Server 2003, this would be a snap because right. it's just built in. Uh, I'm running XP here, nothing special, so I need a DHCP server. And one of the best ones, and I think it's kind of overlooked, is actually TFTPD. Yes, TFTPD, which is for, you know, the, the uh, I forget what the T stands for, all of a sudden I'm blanking. But Trivial. Is that what it is? I think so. Okay, cool, because you use it when Don't you're... quote me. All right, <laughs> we're using it. We use TFTP when we want to do things like PXE boots and, and network boots, stuff like that. Or Flashing upgrading, firmwares. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, this, this beautiful little program here for Windows has a uh, DHCP server built in. I, I assume that's as part of the whole PXE booting thing. Right. Um, and I'm using that in conjunction with ICS to you know, call the herd, take all the people in my, uh, that is sucked into the black hole that is Yasser. And assign and them an IP address. Assign them an IP address, share my internet connection through my cell phone. So I'm at the coffee shop being one of those pedantic noobs that you keep talking about, yep. and I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, if you look right here, I actually have uh, way more IP addresses assigned than are in our current test environment. So I'm not really sure who those other people are, but I've got it fired up in, um, uh, ooh, I don't know who they are. Um, I was getting TGI Fridays earlier. That was kind of interesting because it's just down the road. As a word of note, TGI Fridays is about half a mile down the road. Yeah. So, and the Comfort Inn lobby. <laughs> I mean, that, that's like that hotel's like yeah. a mile away. I don't understand. It's this, this, it's the little fun that could. Um, but here is the one I want to show you. Okay, so we've got DXS inter, uh, external, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a uh, uh, an SSID that's connected with this MAC address, and by and the end of it is six five zero zero, right? But check over here, the one with six five zero zero has been the assigned the IP address of one nine two one six eight one dot one zero three. My phone is assigned one dot two fifty. I'm connected to it myself over wireless to, uh, I'm just using the OpenWRT, you could make it some other SSID. Mm -hmm. I'm connected to that over 1.1, 1 .1, so we're really not sure who these 102, these 104, and these 100 people are. But regardless, you are now connected to the internet through the phone. The phone goes to my computer, the computer is on to a DHCP, 
and gives you the gateway of my cell phone. It's okay. just a matter of telling uh, telling the D, uh, the TFTPD program in the DHCP configuration what IP address to use as the default router. Right. Signs it to you. You do an IP config over there on your uh, your your victim. I don't remember. Mark. We'll just call you the Mark. I'm the Mark. You're the Mark. Um, and you and check out your IP. So I'm connected to. Um, Wow, I'm connected to DXS external. Yeah, which is like you know, 15 miles away. Yes, which is my office's external yeah. wireless connection. But I've got an IP address here. Yeah, and it's and it's the 1103, like I thought, right? Yeah. And and you can see your default gateway is the 1101, which is my Ethernet interface here. So now that we've got packets all flowing, uh, it's time to start sniffing. Okay. Now I could do something as easy as. Just uh, firing up Wireshark here, and we've talked about this in ex in you know excess with uh, Chris. And if I go ahead and do that, and you like browse through some web pages, give me a minute because it's uh, let's see, go to capture interfaces, choose my uh, wired, go ahead and start that. Okay, we ready? Yeah, go ahead. And there we go. You know, I can I can actually. It, it's way too much. As you can see here, it's like. It's just going. Yeah, it's it. just going and going and going. And I can follow this TCP stream. I can go over here and follow TCP stream. And I can actually watch, you know, as the HTML comes through, I'm looking at some CSS right now. If I come down here, it's, it's mainly just CSS. Um, nothing it's the Hack5 forums. Oh, it's the Hack5 forums. Yeah. I'm watching our CSS. Um, yeah. And nothing too exciting. I think we're missing a semicolon there. Oh, but, okay. I'll have to fix that. Uh, Looking for the lady in the red dress, even as we've talked with uh, Chris in the past about setting up filters and, and, and setting up colors and whatnot, nothing is easier than a tool that just totally automates the whole process of hijacking our sessions or stealing cookies and all right. the other fun stuff like that. So for that, not only do we have a, so we, we start with a pineapple and now the next two tools are a ferret and a hamster. And you could search on YouTube for these two things, but you're not going to end up with hacking videos. No, you are not. No. No. But, I, but you go ahead and do the search anyway. because Cute little fuzzy hamsters. Dude, the one on the piano with the popcorn is awesome. Priceless. Yes. So I'm going to get out of Wireshark here and All show right. you these two tools. So what are we going to fire up first? OK. So the first thing we're going to fire up, my command prompt. Do you have them already open already? Yeah, I, I've got them open, but I want to show you how to use the first one. And okay. uh, so these are from. These tools are from Aretta Security. Okay, you can go ahead and get these at their blog. I've got everything in the show notes for this. And the technique. This is something that they demonstrated at DefCon, and the technique is called sidejacking. Okay, sounds like fun. So we go ahead and and grab this tool. It's a Windows tool, and first thing you want to do is go ahead and fire up Ferret with the command line option dash capital W. Okay, that's going to list all of your uh, interfaces. Okay, I've got a bunch, and I've got six interfaces on this machine because I got like VMware and like dial-up connections right. and stuff. But if I if I look closely here, uh, connection number five is my Realtek uh, 10100 gigabit Ethernet. So it's your wired NIC. That's my wired NIC. That's the one I want to use. So then I just run it with dash lowercase i and the number five to tell it, hey, I want to use that interface. And I've already got it running here and show you what it looks like. Okay. This is it, okay? So this is Ferret. I know it's just it's just raw packets, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's really just a um, it's a specialized kind of um, kind of packet sniffer that's just looking for one thing. It's looking for sessions. It's looking for cookies so we can clone them and we can, you know, hijack your session. The next that the this next part of this, the ferret, is uh, should never get here. I should restart ferret. Okay, so we're. I'm sorry, hamster. hamster. Thank you. Um, that calls for a cocktail. Yes, it does. Mm. Cheers. I know I'm going really fast. It's all in the show notes. I promise. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up hamster here. Right. Hamster sidejacking tool. Great. What this guy does is he is uh, it sets up a beautiful little interface for me so that I can fire up my Firefox here. And the trick is after you've run Ferret, okay, so I've got you connected through me. I got Ferret looking out just for the good stuff, and then I run Hamster. What does Hamster do? Well, I come over here and check out my tools and options in Firefox, and under Advanced Network, I want to go to my settings and I want to change it so that I uh, I use a proxy. 
and I want to use my local proxy because what Hamster's done is it set up a local proxy on you know one two seven zero zero one or localhost right. on port thirty one twenty eight. Okay. Go ahead and use that for everything, and uh, and once you do that, you can head over to the sweet little interface over at HTTP colon slash slash hamster. There we go. The hamster 1.0 sidejacking tool. Great. All right. And look at this. 192.168.1.103. Hey, that's me. Yeah, exactly. Because if I look at Yossiger, I've got DXS internal. I've got your MAC address here. All that looks good. I look at the TFTPD. And hey, look, same MAC address for 1.103. And if I fire up Wireshark, if I fire up can enable do a MAC address sniff, I can you know see uh, you know everybody right. that's here. So here you are. and. Um, and so you are the mark on my EPC. Yes. Okay. So I'm at the coffee shop. Yes, and I think you've got some extra keys there with the uh, whole spilling on the yeah, keyboard. Yeah, about there. that. So, um, so what I'm doing is I'm here at the coffee shop, and you know because I've got nothing better to do, all yeah. I want to do is check MySpace. Of course. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and log into MySpace. And where am I getting tubes from? I'm getting them from you. Yes. But I don't know that. No, of course, because you think you're on your work access point. Now, why you would be on your work access point at the coffee <laughs> shop is beyond me. But here's the thing. Who's, who's going to, I mean. People are dumb. Yes. <laughs> Let's just put dumb. it out there. People are dumb. People are dumb. I know this is totally so, sounding malicious. There's a good, there's a good side. There's actually a teaching side. There's a, so, a white hat so side. So I'm logged this. into MySpace currently. OK, so you get, you get on your MySpace. I look over here at my hamster tool. And I'm like, hey, look at this, oh, 1.103. And I go ahead and click over. And I get these beautiful lists of all of these places that I have cookies from. Let me make this list a little bit easier to read here. And oh, hey, look at this. We got the Hack5 forums. We got homemyspace.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on this MySpace one. And look at oh, that. Oh, wow. I'm now logged in as, well, you logged in as my account. But, right. Um, but it's because, I, because Ferrets found it. Hamsters mirrored it, and now I'm in Firefox using this beautiful thing. And you can jack thing. whatever you want from me. Now I can go and edit your profile and be like, you know, I like biscuits. So I can put that all over your homepage and be like, Darren Kitchen likes biscuits. Next time you log in, you're like, what the hell? I don't like biscuits. Personally, I love biscuits. But you know what? That's just me. Now, OK, that being said, we've had comments and questions about how do we protect ourselves against Yasuger? How do we protect ourselves against this. Okay, I can give you a much longer and in depth. Uh, Just give me the five second version. The five second version is if you're at the coffee shop and you see your work access point, that's not your work access point. Two, uh, if you know anything about your network, like this one assigns you an IP address of 192.168, right. blah, blah, blah. If you're expecting a 10.10 .10 to something, that's not your, you know, probably so that's not. Two. You might be a little suspicious. Um, you might also consider some of the other devices on the network. So. If I'm at the hack house, I know that if I hit 10.10.0.31, I should see Audrey, the computer upstairs, or you know, uh, 205, our open file or box. Exactly. So on and so we forth. we have certain characteristics. So we'll we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. But there's something that you can do. Excuse me. Even if you are connected through a pineapple. Can we just turn off cookies? <laughs> yeah. That, and and welcome to Web 0.1. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, the, here's what you need to do. You just need to tunnel your shit. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. We've talked about it again and again. It's really just the most secure method, and I think it deserves a much longer and in-depth explanation of ways that you can set up your own home tunneling system, whether it's using SSH because or something. Because it's gotten a lot VPN, easier. Like, oh, dude, it's gotten a hell of a lot yeah. easier. I mean, even if you just use something like logmein.com, to you know, log into your home computer and then do your browsing through there, everything's like 256-bit AES. I mean, it's going to take a long, gold. probably longer the, than the you're going to be sitting there drinking a cafe latte uh, at the uh, uh, shop. No, how about the margarita? Indeed. So I know there's a lot of stuff, but that gives you kind of an idea of what is capable once people are flowing through your. So we so we've taken player. the 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 proof of concept as uh, of the Osiger, mm -hmm. and we've actually um, put it in a real world si situation and shown you okay. Here's what you've got with it. Yeah. Now here's what we can do with it. Yeah, that's that's what you need to watch out for. Is because if you if you're on shady access points, you know you need to wa worry about people uh, stealing your cookies. Because once here, once I'm logged in, I could change your password. It could be my bank I session. Could, yeah, 
And, and that's then, the scary part. That's the scary. I mean, MySpace, you put biscuits all over my homepage. I'm going to be a little upset. But you get into, and it's, you know, typically the same exact technology. So. I mean, think about it this way. I mean, banks, I mean, you can initiate wire transfers from the web nowadays. That's so hot. that's scary. So mm -hmm. that being said, we, we'll, you know, yeah, write so up some ideas for. So that's ferret and hamster with a pineapple. Awesome. All right. You know what else I like? What's that? Such an easy throw. I love trivia. You know who else likes trivia? I like trivia too. <laughs> Last week's trivia was, by mid-1940, what craft littered London in the hundreds with the task of defending against dive bombers and the occasional V-1 flying bomb? This was correctly answered by Miss Hartwell on the Hack 5 forums. So we're going to send them some Hack 5 stickers and a Protobozo CD. This week, we have a different prize for you. Not only do we have the stickers, but we also have a WYSIWYG comic. It's volume one called Freak by Ed Piscor. See, ta-da! I love it, it's a really good comic book, and I think you'll like it too. This week's trivia is, what German aircraft was so large that it required passengers to move to either side of the fuselage in order to make turns? If you're the first one to answer this right in the Hack5 forums, well, you know the prize already, and we'll send that to you. I'll send you out a PM for your address, and I'll send you some nice prizes. And I also wanted to mention the Dev5 group. We need some volunteers for this to do some small coding challenges. You can check this out at hack5.org forums. And last but not least, I wanted to mention our sponsor for the trivia. Thank you so much, Netflix, for sponsoring this show. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. Netflix plans start from $4.99, and as a new member, you can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership. Check it out at netflix.com slash hack5, and please remember to type the www when using this code. <laughs> Next, I'm going to throw it to Matt. Take it away, dude. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was uh, enthralled in the WYSIWYG. Um, you a great comic. It, we, we actually got assigned one of these, and uh, I read it the whole way through. So, uh, guys, uh, spend some time on the trivia. Volume two is coming out. Okay, the first one is Freak, and it talks about a lot of the uh, stuff about like you know you, you got your uh, Kevin Mitnick stuff. You've got your you know the, basically the history of this stuff like uh, uh, Wozniak and Jobs and the Blue Box. Mm -hmm. So very cool. It's history in a comic book and Volume 2 is coming out. I am super excited to yeah. see the next one that is hacking. Ooh. Yeah. Do we make a special appearance? Uh, I think or I do we might, fail? but I'm not positive, so we'll see when that comes out in about All a right. week. So All check right. it out. There we go. Um, I'm going to show you guys a tool that VMware distributes for free. Now, the reason I say VMware is because I use VMware in the infrastructure, and if you're going to be doing virtualization... Yeah, yeah let's take a step back. So you're talking VMware, for mm -hmm. those that aren't aware, virtualization. So taking, taking servers and making them run in happy mode on a single server, so we've got one machine doing double duty, triple duty, whatever. Right, and, and calculations and you know research has been done that stating, you know, if you have a physical machine in your infrastructure, mm -hmm. it's probably only being utilized to about 30% of its potential. Oh, that's 30%? You should see my exchange server, dude. Well, I mean, exchange and active directory, day. things like that. It but just idles. If, if you've got, you know, uh, backing up, 30% utilization. Sure. Obviously, the whole green movement, so on and so forth, and also reducing server room costs, cooling costs, all that goes into calculations for reasons to virtualize. Mm -hmm. virtualize. So, we use v VMware in our infrastructure. Yeah, I use it too. Um, we use uh, VMware uh, ESX server, which mm -hmm. is the corporate ESX server. Um, allows you to do uh, things like storage vMotion, which you can actually, if you've got multiple boxes and you've got a controller, it allows you to shut off a machine and turn it back on in like half a millisecond. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. or five milliseconds, okay. excuse me. Five milliseconds. Yeah, half a millisecond's pretty fast. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. So, and, and there's lots of these products. I mean, there's not just VMware. Like, no, uh, we've talked about uh, Microsoft Virtual PC in the past. Well, right? Virtual PC has now been replaced by, well, for, Virtual PC is a desktop application. Sure, sure. What we're going to be talking about is the server versions okay. of these virtualization products. Microsoft, in their 2008 product line for server, actually has virtualization built in. Hmm. And if you're worried about virtualization licensing costs with Microsoft products, yeah, I can imagine. you can run five copies, virtualized copies, 
of a single license for Microsoft. Love that. So you can buy one Server 2008 license and run five virtual copies of mm -hmm. it. I-I-N-A-L, but that sounds very cool. Exactly. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to prep your environment for virtualization. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to take all your existing physical servers and we're going to convert them to virtual servers. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can set up like a multi-homed ghost solution where you kick off the in the install and it pushes it out to another box. Mm -hmm. Here, we're going to basically convert the machine on the local machine. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to download the VMware converter, mm -hmm. which is freely available to everybody. Okay. Uh, and we're going to install it. You guys know how to install software? I'm not going to go into that with you. We're going to click Convert Machine. Great. So this is like a wizard that it uh, that it walks you through the exactly. steps, and then this is going to take a physical piece of iron right here and turn it into a couple of bits that we can run on another machine because we're like you're not good enough for the iron. Exactly. Awesome. What we're going to do is this this segment we're going to show you how to dump a physical machine to a virtual machine. So we're going to click next, and we're going to say we want to convert a physical computer. Click next. Okay. Because we're going to do it on the local machine, we're going to select local machine. Next. Basically, so what do you mean, hang on, hang on. You say since we're going to do it on a local machine, what are we going to do on the local machine? What we're going to do is we're going to take all of the configuration on this machine, Okay. basically make an image of it, All right. and instead of making an image of it, we're going to create a virtual machine based on that image. Okay, and that image will be saved to where? To this. To the local machine? Correct. To Okay, so uh, how does this differ from something like uh, Microsoft uh, Windows uh, NT Backup, where I do like a system state image, I do that that fun phantom backup stuff where I can just do what it this to is going to do. This is going to create the virtual machine container mm -hmm. as well as the disk. Oh, okay. So what we can do is we can then take this image, put it on a flash drive, right. and throw it into our brand new server, All right. and automatically import that machine, start it up as just as a so if I'm going to take my machine and I'm going to make a basically a copy of it and save that copy in a single or a couple of files mm -hmm. on that own machine. Yes. What kind of considerations do I have to con uh, to take into account here as far as the disk is concerned? You know. I mean, as far as the disk is concerned, if you've got okay, if your disk is pretty much full, you had you, you were running yeah, this before. I, I deleted my uh, my SQL backups. I had like 30 gigs yeah. of transaction so logs. So if you so don't have enough room on your drive to actually store the image, mm -hmm. we have to set up a multiple copy, uh, a multiple install of VMware Converter to actually source this out oh, to. So we can feed it over the network. Exactly. Okay, but we're going to do it locally. So given that you know on our 160 gig SCSI here, we've got like you know over half of it free. We can make a file that is the drive. Exactly. Right? And we can do this while the operating system is running. Yes. Okay, so we don't have to reboot or anything crazy like that. No boot disks, nothing. Well, I mean, as far as the boot disk is concerned, it basically takes this and it says, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to restart the machine and it's going to do its thing. It's going to do like a ghost session. Oh, okay. And it's going to push it out in a so multi. So it does really restart the machine? Yes. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to type the virtual machine name, and in this case, it's going to be Chu, and the location is, you know, uh, put it on the we'll put C it drive. on the C drive. Now this isn't recursive, so when we load up Chu, will we see this also inside of the C drive of Chu? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I <laughs> <laughs> no, no, basically, basically what it's going to do is it's just going to create a file. Mm -hmm. So after the, the after it's done creating its image, and you've copied it off site of this machine, mm -hmm. you can delete it. Great. Okay. Cool. And then I have this physical machine in a file. Yes. I have reduced you to a shell script. I love this. I know. Okay. That's how I roll. All right. So it gives us a, it gives us a warning saying that the selected destination is the same as the source machine. Oh, no. Do we have enough space to do this? Well, yes. if you delete five years of transaction logs on a SQL server, you might. Yeah. So we're going to say yes, and we can split it into two gig files if we want to. Because of NTFS or FAT32? Of FAT32, FAT32 file restrictions, so on and so forth. Yeah. We uh, to. We're going to allow the virtual disks to expand, which instead of creating a massive 30 gig drive, mm -hmm. obviously we don't have the room to do that. Yeah. So we will go ahead and we will allow it to expand and only use what it needs? Exactly. I love that. So Sounds efficient. Click next. And we go ahead and we set up the networks. Okay. So, so what do you mean when you say set up the network? So, well, in interfaces v like in in VMware, there's difference between bridged, NAT, and host only. Oh, okay, cool. So, obviously, 
for a you know uh, a dedicated server environment or running server, you're probably going to want to use bridged. All right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use bridged, and we'll turn it off at power on. Okay. Just so we can finalize some settings after we bring the machine we'll back in. Because we'll log into this once we've got it going, and then we'll tweak our network settings as we need in exactly. the new environment. Exactly. All and right. you can adjust how many NICs there are from 1 to 15. So if our physical machine only actually had one NIC before, we can now make it a 2 home to 3 home, whatever. Exactly. Love you can that. do whatever you want as far as networks and customization goes. Now, we can automatically install VMware tools. And VMware tools are going to allow you guys to utilize the mouse, the you know custom vi uh, video settings, uh, and all that good stuff that goes along it with running it a version. It makes it a lot easier to manage so you don't have to hit control and alt to get out of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can customize the identity of the machine. We can change the name. We can change the UID. This is beautiful for rollout. Exactly. We can sit here and, and wow, OK. So And we can also and remove. And this is a free product. Yes. Wow. And we can also remove, which is critical, mm -hmm. all system restore checkpoints. Because all system restore checkpoints are going to be based on old hardware right. that is now that, not compatible. That brings me to what I want to ask you about is, OK, so VMware, you can pretty much identify a, a virtual machine based on the characteristics of the hardware. Because the hardware isn't real. It's being emulated, right. virtualized, whatever you want to say. Um, so if we take, like I don't know, like a Dell uh, PowerEdge 2900, mm -hmm. right? and we turn that into a virtual machine, it's not going to have the same Intel NIC that it had before. It's nope. not going to have the same NVIDIA graphics card it had before. What is this going to do to the operating system in order to make it like the new hardware? And are there any other concerns as far as drives and, and, and raids and stuff like that? As far as drives and stuff like that goes, basically, VMware is looking inside the machine. And it's saying, OK, I've got a, a C drive of 60 gigs. I've got a D of 120 and so on and so forth. You can actually select each one that you mm -hmm. want and each one that you don't to actually be ported over into this virtual machine. Now, oh, okay. what, what Converter is going to do is it's actually going to pre-install all the drivers that are required so that when you boot this thing up, it's not going to blue screen on it's you. It's not going to freak, be like, out, and freak be like, out where's the hardware? If exactly. you've ever changed to put a XP hard and drive re in another computer the, and then the motherboard and is like, what the hell? The reason Windows blue screens is because it sees something that it doesn't know. Oh, so, so if you if injected we, the drivers, you could totally boot it. Exactly. And oh. that's what this is going to do. That, that, that leads to another segment for another time. Exactly. So now here we've got our conversion summary. Great. The type, the disk options, the volume, the destination, so on and so forth. We click Finish. And oh, look, there it goes. So now it's creating a snapshot of the volume. Mm -hmm. It's creating a virtual machine based off that snapshot. And it's actually dumping it onto our C drive. You know what I'm thinking? Uh, Snubs is about to upgrade her machine from a Athlon-based system to a dual-core system, mm -hmm. and wouldn't it be great? Because we've done the whole like, uh, did you make sure you got your Firefox bookmarks? Did you right. make sure you got your, you know, your your profiles for Outlook? All that little stuff, right? Wouldn't it be awesome to just go ahead and virtualize her physical machine right before you rebuild it, and then bam, you know, if you ever want to go back to the old school VMware server and just import the machine. Sweet. So we've got it exporting mm -hmm. to a file. You're going to show us next time how to bring this into the infrastructure, bring it into our VMware Well, first server. what we're going to show you is how to actually prep a system for mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, importation process and actually installing ESX on it and Love installing it. all that other stuff. So you uh, are that'll the virtualization be man. So I'm I looking try. forward to hey, you know, save us some money and uh, you know, keep the power bill down. Because I've got uh, some servers that just sit there looking for somebody to get an IP address and then assign them one. And then it sits there thinking it did a good job. So real quick, finishing up, we can actually go into the directory and mm -hmm. see that oh, it's wow. got a Look lock that. file, that it's got the VMX, which is the virtual machine, mm -hmm. and it's got the VMDKs. Now, the VMDKs are all two gigs. Yeah. So basically, it's created all the VMDKs. It's created everything. That was fast. All you have to do, it's not done yet, but okay. it, it creates the files. All you have to do is then copy this to like a NAS, mm -hmm. and then once you've got your virtual server set up, copy it back over and boot it up. And this works for more than just so. If you're not in a VMware environment, though, this converter will do uh, will convert your virtual machine to other sorts of file containers. If you there you there want. is an open standard mm -hmm. for virtual containers. Um, it's not a hundred percent, but it does work. Oh, that's so. Cool.
if you want, you can use uh, the Citrix client and, and stuff like that, and th there's a whole bunch of different. It's ones. interesting that VMware would release a free tool like this that would be, you know, work with their competitors. Uh, so, do they have like, is there an enterprise version of this? Is there some sort of like money making thing here? There is that allows you to create a bootable CD, boot into it, and then just copy out a machine without it having to be on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that that gets into a whole nother level. Mass of deployments, fifteen thousand dollars worth yeah. of licensing fees. But for and stuff your like home that. stuff. This sounds a really cool way. Exactly. I mean, even if it's just like a snapshot dealy. Right. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. So if you guys have virtualization questions, uh, definitely hit up Matt because he is the master of that stuff. And I uh, understand that you're going to be doing some more of this on the show. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one is going to be, do you need virtualization? And yeah. I've got some calculations for BTU output, wattage, SEER rating as far as air conditioning goes, all kind of calculations that go into your monthly usage in your server room. And we can actually go ahead and convert that into, do you need virtualization? So watch for that next time on the show. Rock on. Cool. Cool. OK. Well, then, uh, I think at this point, we're just going to wrap up the show. So if there aren't any other uh, uh, questions, let's go ahead and ask Shannon. This week, our question comes from Virix1337. Virix writes, what is your recommendation for a monitor recording program? Or do you use a hardware device on a PCI or something? I wanted to make a YouTube video, but nothing seems so great. But your video looks incredible. That's right. There are a couple of ways to do this, uh, namely the hardware solutions that you don't really want to do, the ones that we did at the top of this season. Yeah. Uh, with a scan converter, which essentially takes a VGA from your PC and then turns it into a composite or S video. And then you got to pipe it back into something. Something analog. Yeah. You, you probably don't want to do that. We've gone to something more digital, and that's why ours is looking sweet. Um, and for that, we're using scalers and HDMI and some high end Mac stuff. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more readily available, there are um, three different software ways that we recommend, and then I'll give you a little hardware one after this. Um, so first up, if you're looking for a free and open source way, the way that we did it in, uh, I guess, the first two seasons was using this program called Camp Studio. You can find it at campstudio.org. It is a source board project. It is open source, and it is awesome. Uh, though, OK, so it installs on your system, and it'll capture your screen to a uh, flash file or like your favorite uh, encoding codec, whatever, your right. AVI, whatnot. Um, and it's pretty high quality, but I will let you know, it can be a little bit processor intensive. Yeah. So you may, and if you're doing like 3D gaming, it's probably not the thing for you. But if you're wanting something that's open source, that's something free uh, to just get your like to do a little screencast, this is a great way to go. And it's the way that we did it for the first two years. Yeah, the, uh, the one solution that I've used in the past is called Fraps, F-R-A-P-S dot com. Um, the nice thing about this is it takes DirectX video, both 9 and 10, and dumps it into a file that you can then upload to your YouTubes or in your timelines for your editing software. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, uh, it's only about 30 bucks to buy. Um, uh, 37, okay. Um, but the great thing about it is, as Darren mentioned that Cam Studio uh, was not the best for not 3D really gaming. This is really designed for your 3D gaming. It can run in the background. You can dump it to half size, full size, mm -hmm. set all kind of hotkeys for recording and stuff like that. And it, it really nice small file sizes, and it isn't going to chew up your uh, your processors. Nice. Uh, and another one that I do want to recommend, because I have been playing with like a beta copy. Uh, it's pretty old, but uh, I've been checking out the new version, and it's called Camtasia Studio. Uh, the guys uh, up in Canada are friends Lab Rats. Uh, Andy Walker, Sean Carruthers turned me on to this. And basically, it is like Camp Studio, but like way more built out. This is, um, it's got its own timeline thing. You can do your own narrations. You can do fixed sizes. You can do the whole screen. You can scale it. And then it's got like ways to export it out into several different file containers, file formats, and whatnot. So, uh, or directly upload to their site. So if you're doing something like a screencast where you want to show off a program, do a little tutorial action, it's a little pricey, but it is Probably the so most in-depth solution. Oh my god, yeah. The, the solutions that we mentioned here, guys, are all Windows. Yeah. Uh, Paul made mention of VLC in the most recent version, now instituting uh, where you can dump footage. Uh, he says that it's a little hard to get tweaked correctly, but if you want to check it out, if you're on a Mac or Linux, go ahead and check it out, VLC, yeah. uh, video land. As for hardware solution, here's the most beautiful one. All we've been talking about are software ways to capture what's on the screen and put in a file, which is going to you know, hurt your video, hurt your hard drive, hurt right. your processor. 
It's so beautiful. If you can just clone your desktop, pop in a little VGA here, or if you've got a uh, if you've got a video card that supports like a composite or an S video out, and you have a camera or some other sort of recording device that can take that footage in. Right. Uh, we used it in the first season when we needed to record the like, game footage, stuff like that. It's beautiful because uh, it's not going to tax your PC whatsoever. So you clone your desktop. If you have a camera that can accept those, something that you can send it out, whether it's you know HDMI on the high end or even if it's just composite us video, um, it's great for game stuff because then you don't need to worry about your processor. Yeah. Yeah, taking a hit. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers your questions. And for uh, your question to be answered on the show, feedback at hack5.org, or just go ahead and use the contact form on hack5.org, the homepage. Yeah. Um, one thing we do want to let you guys know about is uh, we finally got all of our iTunes issues fixed mm -hmm. um, with uh, RSS feeds and so on and so forth. So if you guys are not currently subscribed to the show, uh, go ahead and head on over to revision3.com slash hack5 or you can find the links at hack5.org right in the there. upper right-hand corner of the page. Um, so go ahead, subscribe to iTunes, and always make sure that you're on top of the latest techno list. There you go. That's the best way to keep up with us. Um, and we got a big photo there, a big, uh, big picture thing. Big yeah. Real thing to talk about. But first, I want to tell you, the Raft Star thing that we talked about last week is still going. So if you head over to rafstar.com, that is the place to be if you are interested in winning a Hack 5 awesome swag bag. We got your Hack 5 t-shirt. We got your shot glasses. Uh, we got some buttons, some stickers. Right on the front it's page. It's right on the front page there. It's the Hack 5 prize bundle uh, and autographed copy of Superman issue 648, which we were so awesomely featured in. So uh, this, uh, I, I understand that uh, it is not eligible for our global audience. It's really just for our, our US viewers. Yeah. Um, for our global ones, tune in next week. We're, we're, we're going to do something a little um, on our own to make similar sure that, that something similar for you guys, since we, we feel bad about you being left out on this. but. Uh, I do, if you are in the U.S., check out Raftstar, R -A -F -star com, and it's basically, you don't have to uh, pay anything, it's not one of these, like, win a free iPod gimmick things, it's, uh, it's really a site that draws interest to a lot of charities. Our charity of choice is the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the EFF, who's going back to awesome uh, hackers like ourselves, and, um, and and in addition to bringing light to those charities, they raffle off awesome cool stuff. So you can get stuff like, you know, in addition to the Hack 5 awesome prize bundle, they get things like Xbox 360, coach bag, you can get gift certificates to all sorts of different places. So, um, you know, you don't have to pay anything. You just sign up for a free account. You can, you know, get as many tickets on all right. the different ones, sign up for all the ones you want. And basically you just win big and find out about awesome charities that could, you know, Use a little bit of loving. Yeah, so we want to thank Raftstar and uh, guys, make sure you check it out at the website and uh, get a ticket. There's 10 days left. Yeah. For, well, not 10 I'm days, not sure. but when they however many but yeah. days. But yeah, uh, the last thing that we want to do is we want to thank Nikki Cox. Nikki Culp. Nikki Culp. Yes. Um, I know her she, very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dimple boy. <laughs> Dimple boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, on the on the wall. There's a three pane. Uh, the hand painting that she that she did in binary and shading and shadowing of a Hack Five logo. So we met Nikki in Tennessee, yes, uh, and we have to absolutely thank her. She said that you know I want to do something special for you guys. Love the show. My husband about loves the special, show. Show man. Yeah, I mean it's it's prominently displayed right in our living room. And Nikki, we can't thank you enough, dude. I you know like was one of those things where like just like the kitchen, I kind of forgot about it and like come down like oh my god, you know. Yeah. And um and I, I keep seeing it and being like. Whoa, <laughs> you know, the, it's it's nice that it's like the centerpiece of our living room. It's the centerpiece of our lives. It's 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 the four of us living in the hack house, doing the show together, uh, and it's so cool that you could you know share your techno lust with us in canvas yeah. and oils. Very yeah. very cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, when I first took it out, I mean, I was like blown away at the fact that I mean, a she made it to the dimensions that we wanted, and she did it all on herself. She basically was like, okay, what colors do you want? We're like, uh, these ones, and she's like. Touche, here's your painting. Yeah. I was like, yeah. But uh, but yeah, so we want to thank Nikki uh, and everybody else who uh, wants to uh, send us free show. That's <laughs> cool. I love that. Yes. So, uh, without I, further ado, I think that's pretty much it. Guys, thanks for tuning in this week, and uh, we hope to catch you next week. Until next time, Shannon. 
Trust your TechnoLest. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. This is your daily dose of your weekly dose of your let's start it over. Ready? Beep! This episode oh, of... <laughs> Don't be a douche! <laughs> Open up notepad and start squishing the keys. <laughs> Can I have another margarita? <laughs> yeah. What's going on with you, man? Um... Wow, I really wish you would have uh... gone first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just having a cock on my shoulder. That's cool. 